Well, hi everyone. Another update on the Chilcotin landslide in British Columbia, Canada. The artificial lake or the temporary lake that formed behind this landslide debris cut through the landslide debris and flowing downstream as we speak. It wasn't the big catastrophic release that local officials had initially warned about or worried about. Uh, initial flows in the immediate area downstream of this landslide debris were certainly much higher than the spring snowmelt levels, but it wasn't the deluge that uh, everybody was initially led to believe that could occur. So the information for this update comes from the Chilcotin River landslide information portal, as well as a ministry press release in British Columbia that was held yesterday. And it didn't get much uh, media attention. In fact, there were no questions from reporters at the news conference in person. I don't know if there were no media present or they just didn't have any questions. And there were some call-in questions that were uh, not very good questions and there weren't very many of them. In fact, uh, the two videos that I've done about this topic, uh, you all out there in, in the viewing audience have asked way better questions than uh, the media has. And, as is typical, there's a big run up to the exciting aspect of how big a disaster uh, is this going to turn out to be. And then when it happens, in terms of trying to get information as to how it happened, what were the details, what were the flows, it's much harder to get to uh, through mainstream media outlets. So that's what I wanna address here today. So I'm gonna show you a series of photos. One set of photos comes from the landslide debris area and the other is well downstream. Let's start with the photos near this temporary dam, as it were. You can see water flowing over the top. These photos were taken from a helicopter at 9 a.m. on Monday, August 5th. You can see water is rising up in this new reservoir area. It's flowing over the top of the landfill debris, which is what I said was gonna happen versus any type of internal seepage resulting in rapid erosion of the landfill debris. And just another photo of that material moving over towards the downstream area. And you can see in this photo here, if you look in the right-hand side of the image, if you look at this side of the photo here on the, on the right side of this image, you can see water is running through in an indirect fashion and is exiting the downstream face of this landslide debris right on the right side, or would be the left bank. Just another image of the water encroaching over the top of the landslide debris. So as I mentioned, water made it over the top and started flowing over this landfill debris at 9 a.m. roughly on Monday, August 5th. Here's a photo. Th these are a little dark because these were screenshots from the press conference from yesterday, but at 8 a.m., no water's overflowing at this point. And then by 9 a.m., you start to see water enter the downstream channel, downstream of the slide debris. Flow rates at this point are seven and a half cubic meters per second, and these are all estimates. Then by 10 a.m., flow rates 75 cubic meters per second. 11 a.m., 270 cubic meters per second, which is still below the spring runoff or freshet levels. And by noon, flow discharge is around 350 cubic meters meters per second. At one o'clock, 600 cubic meters per second. Then 130, 750 cubic meters per second, which was about the peak. And then around two o'clock, water was freely flowing through the landfill debris, similar to the width of the original channel. Now let's look at these areas downstream, and this is after 2 p.m. So water's flowing through, as you can see in these images. Looks to be bank full, but not, any widespread flooding occurring here by any stretch of the imagination. So as I mentioned, this wasn't the catastrophe that local officials originally feared or warned about. They had initially done a one hour model where essentially the reservoir behind this landfill debris was released within a one hour period. As it turns out, it was a little over five hours and so they've got a six hour model here, which in terms of what actually happened is, is very close to their six hour model. And this press conference was held yesterday afternoon. 
so a few hours after the breach had occurred. And you can see these plots inside the slide image. The water flows through as a pulse. So it starts out with slow flow rates, then comes to a, a maximum, and then drops off rapidly after that. This is quite unlike the sustained flows that you would have during the spring runoff period. So they gave some water elevations in the channel. At Farwell Canyon Bridge, the rise in river level was estimated to be 10 meters above normal. And then at the confluence of the Chilcotin and Fraser, about seven meters above normal. And then they estimated it would take about 16 hours for the pulse to reach a little wet on the Fraser, And those flows would be below spring runoff or, or fresh at levels. And then you go down to Hope outside the Vancouver metro area. And they're only expecting a one meter rise 30 hours after the breach. So that'll be sometime later tonight. So one meter rise isn't uh, much of anything. Of course, those were well below spring runoff levels, but yet that isn't stopping the media from alarming people. You see these headlines as early as today. Metro Vancouver officials bracing for local impacts of Chilcotin River landslide. So it doesn't quite jibe with the one meter rise in river level, does it? So I'm glad this all turned out to be a relatively minor event. It was quite interesting. It'd be interesting to see how much time it takes for all the debris in this channel to get cleared out, as well as to see if there's any landslides in the upstream area of what used to be the reservoir due to a sudden drawdown scenario. And there could be slides downstream too if, due to bank erosion in some of these higher flow areas immediately downstream of the landslide debris. But overall, a, a very good outcome here. So in a moment, I'm gonna roll credits for the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. I also, I'm gonna roll credits for those of you who provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. After the credits, I'm going to show the 3D type panorama that was compiled by the BC government from August 5th. It's uh, pretty interesting, so I'll roll that at the end here. Thanks for watching, everyone.